All right, welcome to a brand new episode of Student of the Gun Radio. Yes, indeed, it is episode number 1183. We're just creeping up there. And it, remember, this is our 10th year. Yes, indeed, our 10th year of Student of the Gun. Matter of fact, we already passed. We went beyond uh, this earlier this month, or actually last month. It's April now. Uh, last month, we had we celebrated our 10-year anniversary at Student of the Gun Radio. And in order to celebrate in big, large fashion, what we are going to do is we're going to all get together at the G-Lock booth, at the Glock booth, uh, at the NRA annual meetings, and we're going to have a Student of the Gun 10th anniversary book launch, book signing, product giveaway, super happy fun time, number one lucky. Uh, and thank you to super number one lucky super number what's gonna be super number one lucky super happy fun time uh it's gonna be saturday the saturday of the nra is friday saturday sunday we're gonna do it on saturday uh at one o'clock at the glock booth and uh if you uh well you need to be there or be square how's that sound how's that sound so yeah, it's yeah. booth four seven five five yes four seven five five uh and if you can't remember that, it doesn't matter. Just go show up. You'll be able to find the clock booth. It's not going to be hard. Uh, and we're all going to be there. We're going to be there. The folks from Tactical Response are going to be there. We're going to have our books. We're going to have The Four Pillars of Fighting by James Yeager. Physical copies available. Uh, we're going to be celebrating the launch of that book. We're going to be celebrating the 10th anniversary of Student of the Gun. It's going to be a super happy, fun time. And uh, hopefully... Uh, at the end of the day, the people at Glock are going to be like, "Damn, those student of the those students of the gun are some serious dudes. They're some serious dudes." Uh, go ahead and play the music, and then when we come back. I'm going to let you guys in on a a little super secret fun time. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. Here, we don't just talk about guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now, sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drift ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Martin, and the shipping ogre, Zach Martin. Now, give it up to your beloved host, the Pimp Hand of America, Professor Paul Martin. If you needed one more reason to show up uh, in Indianapolis to the, it's the, is it called the Indianapolis Convention Center or the Indiana Convention Center? Yeah, Indiana Convention it's called Center. called the Indiana Convention Center in Indianapolis. Uh, and all you have to do is be an NRA member. And if you're not an NRA member, show up, buy a one-year membership, and you will, you will automatically, because if you have a membership, you are granted access to the show. And if you don't, you can show up, buy a one-year membership, and put a badge around your neck and have access to the show. Well, we we decided, obviously, uh, because we're doing a thing with Tactical Response, we're promoting, we're doing a basically a big physical launch uh, of the Four Pillars of Fighting by James Yeager. Uh, I got together with Kayla at uh, TR, at Tactical Response, and we decided, you know what would be great? It would be great that if w during the the event that anybody who came up and purchased a book, uh, and, and I think what we'll do, Jared, uh, if, if this works for you guys, is, is anybody who purchases either the Four Pillars of Fighting or one of our books, and we're going to have the martial application books there, we'll have the pistol, the rifle, the shotgun, and so forth, we'll have those books there. If you buy a book you'll get a ticket. you get a little ticket with a little number. And uh, we're going to do the event. And then at the close, at the close of the event, we're going to get somebody with a big, loud voice to uh, announce the numbers. And whoever has the winning ticket is going to win prizes. Guess what? One of the prizes, I just talked to the folks at Glock yesterday morning. Uh, we actually, we kind of had this in a while for, in the works for a little while. But uh, they're going to, in honor of James Yeager, who carried a Glock 19, basically, as soon as he discovered that there was a Glock 19, he started carrying it, and he carried it right up to the time that he left us. Glock is going to donate and give away the newest generation model 19 Glock. 
So the a G19 oh, yeah. is that's the grand prize. Uh, obviously, uh, Tactical Response has they have media partners or they have manufacturing partners. Uh, NSR Tactical, the holster company uh, that James James wore an NSR holster. So NSR is going to give away a holster. Uh, KnifeKits.com is going to give away a knife kit. Uh, power tack is going to give away an edc light because james worked with power tack and then we also talked to our good buddies over at night fission that's night fission they make nuclear sites they make the accu the student of the gun accurate site and they have uh volunteered they've kindly uh, agreed to donate a set of accurate nuclear sites the student of the gun accurate sites for the glock 17 19 so uh, we're going to have the sights, the gun, holster, knife, flashlight. Uh, all We're going to give them all away. I think, do you guys think it would be better to do a grand prize and everybody gets everything or do five separate prizes and just? Um, I think that if we can pull together enough thing, let, let's do multiple prize packs. Yeah, I think we'd yeah, that, that, be. Yeah. yeah. We'll, uh, we'll do at least one grand prize. Well, it's the grand prize awesome. is the Glock. Yeah, the grand prize is the Glock. That's the that's the numero uno, obviously. Maybe maybe Glock will come out with their Glock rifle, and we can give that away. <laughs> don't don't tell people that. Don't, don't. Yeah, I know. Don't get people don't, started. I'm with looking that. for. I I don't want to misquote James, but I cannot find the quote. And so I got his book right here. This sucker's thicker than I thought it was going to be. That's what she said. Um, but I'm book. looking for the Glock quote. Do you remember what? page or the whereabouts of that oh come on wrong button when you said oh here we go there you go Boom. it's thicker than i expected that's right rim shot uh no it's probably it's it probably it's in gear it's in the gear section which is chapter four or yep. yeah so uh yeah so that I'll find it and then I'll say it later. That's in the that, show. Mr. That's stick that's around, that, Mr. That's that. So, but for right now, if you would like to be featured on Student of the Gun Radio, well, there's one way that you can do it. You can leave a review of the show. You can leave it on iTunes or Spotify or wherever, wherever uh, you get this, whatever podcatcher or whatever platform. And if you leave a review and Jared and it catches Jared's eye. I found it. All right. Say it now. Yeah, go ahead and say it. James Yeager said, all guns should be Glocks. All Glocks should be 9mm. And all 9mm should be the Model 19s. There you go. There you go. Yes, indeed. And you're like, yeah, but, but, but. There's no buts. There's no buts. Uh, It's hard to find somebody who's had more experience with training and and teaching people and, and seen more gear and whatnot than James and his team, so. It's hard yeah. to argue with that. Yeah, and, and if you read the book, read the book. Uh, speaking of which, I, I got an ad this morning in my email. Uh, one of the companies, had it's, it's titled Used Magazines on Sale. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm curious. Mm. They didn't have the word quality in there. Uh, so I, I opened it up, and oh, they're all, they're all brand name. They're like Smith & Wesson, SIG, Glock, and so forth. And, $65, 10-round yeah. magazine. Oh, no, 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 no. You can get the uh, the Glock, uh, the ten round forty five Gap magazines for nine ninety five. Oh, of course! You grab them up, man. Grab them up while they're hot. It's, and that's it's, funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's good. Those are good. Those are about as popular as Dick Cancer. But all right, let's go and do the uh, the review of the week. Yeah, this one's from John M. from Discord. If you're not part of the Discord yet, go to studentofthegun.com slash Discord. If you're a grad program member, you get special access to more things in the channel. So make sure in the student lounge, log in there, and then request access. And then Ryan Barker or one of the mods over on Discord will upgrade you and get you access to everything. So step one, studentofthegun.com slash Discord. Step two, Student Lounge, fill out the request form f- to be upgraded to grad program status. Uh, obviously, if you're not a grad there program member, get SOTG.com. You can become one. That's right. The review be. from John M. says, gosh, where to start? I joined the grad program last year. Well, welcome. That's relatively new for, Good job. for uh, compared to some of these people. 
man, I was looking the other day, and I'll finish the review in a second. I was looking the other day, and we've got people that have been grad program members with us since 2015. Awesome sauce. That is, yeah, that is eight years. That is that's, eight years. That's awesome. Yeah, Good job. That. Pat yourself on the back, so he sh- unless you're driving. Yeah, he says, join the grad program last year. Professor Paul, Jared Markle, and Zach Markle, with their SOTG mindset, have permeated my brain. There's a joke in there somewhere. I've met some You're really welcome. terrific people in this community who have and continue to provide me with invaluable information on a variety of subjects. And by the way, I appreciate that. Those of you that interact with each other, uh, mostly it happens in the grad program uh, portion of the the servers or the the program, the um, the private membership places that we have in the technology that we use. But but it does happen in the public as well, and I appreciate those of you that are willing to reach out to other members of the Student of the Gun audience, be it public members or grad program members. Um, I appreciate those of you that are willing to reach out and help each other because that's kind of what we built this community for. We don't want to be the ones. You, we want you to not need us is what we're saying. I'm trying to work myself out of a job here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, John M. from Discord. All right, now let's move on. It's time for a Durko Finish Firearms Segment of the Week. All right, if you're new, you might not remember the Sexy Can Contest, but we did. You know that you realize it was all the way back in 18... Was it really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that was BC. 18 BC. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was B- BC. So, uh, yeah, the, we did the sexy can contest and what we did was, it was a lot of fun and you, uh, many, many, many of you guys joined in. Uh, I'm proud of you. Uh, one of the ways that people were able to uh, participate and by sexy can, we meant ammo can. We told everybody to get an ammo can and Duracoat it. And tell us which Duracoat colors you used. That was one of the, in order to win, that was one of the uh, things you had to tell us which Duracoat colors that you used. And uh, we had, uh, I actually found the notes. I found the notes the other day. Uh, everybody voted. Jared voted, I voted, Nancy voted, Zachary voted. We all, we all voted on it. We picked our top three, and then we, from the assemblage of the top three, we picked our winners. And a lot of you guys, uh, and really went above and beyond. Of course, we have a couple, a couple of professional artists in the audience. That's kind of like cheating, but still. Uh, how would you do that? Well, one of the ways you can do it is see. Duracoat does not just provide the colors. They don't just give you the the color. They also provide you with all of the material. See, that's unlike other companies that are inferior. Uh, what they do is they will provide you with all of the material that you need, the solvents, the cleaners, the prep products, and the stencil material, the stencil material. Now, uh, if you don't know what a stencil is, well, I don't know. <laughs> if you don't know what a stencil is, your dad failed you. <laughs> But it's the thing that's the sticky stuff that you put on the, you know, on the on the product. And now they have pre-cut stencils. They have the skulls and they have the various camouflages and then they have the gun tattoos. And I believe that the the student of the gun gun tattoo still exists. Uh, it should still exist. Uh, so they got the gun tattoos. Yeah, we got we got the girls' guide to guns tattoos. They've got hearts and the fleur de lis and 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 little freaking uh, butterflies and rainbows and stuff like that. And then you got the manly stuff. You got the skull, the hazmat, the spider, the bullseye target, the crosshairs, and so on and so forth. And of course, the official student of the gun logo, the official student of the gun logo. Uh, which you obviously can and should put on your projects just to let people know. But if you would like to, like I said, Duracoat is way more than just colors. Uh, they, ascent, they are a, uh, a hub. They provide you with essentially everything. Here's the deal. If you have nothing 
but an air compressor, they can sell you the airbrushes, the solvents, the dunk tanks, the masking, the protective gear, the scrub pads, the everything you need. Everything you need. And of course, if you'd like to be that guy in your uh, circle of friends that is able to do the really super cool, fantastical uh, Duracoat finishes on guns, you can go to this place called Duracoat University. You can go to Duracoat University and sign up. And if you sign up for Duracoat University, then you can be that guy. You can be that guy. You can put some Imperial credits in your in your account and uh, be a happy dude. If you if you got an FFL uh, or if you've got a small gun shop and you're looking for a way to expand your outreach or you're looking for another product to provide your customers, this is a great, fantastic way to do that. You're like, well, they already bought the guns. Yeah, so you sold them a gun, and then what you do is you do a super cool, fantastical finish on a gun, display it in your shop, eh? And then people come in and they're like, dude, who did that? And you say, oh, we did. I did. We do that here. Like, could you do that on my gun? How much do you have in your account? How many Republic credits do you have? Uh, and the answer is yes. So there you go. All right. So uh, check out our good friends at Duracoat Finished Firearm Finishes. Duracoat Firearm Finishes dot com. Uh, they can help you out. Or you can just go to studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat. And you know, if you want to have some fun, just type in studentofthegun.com slash and start filling in words. And see what works. <laughs> and see what works. <laughs> you might be surprised how much stuff does. But yeah, there, check them out. Check them out. All right. They're good. They're good people. All right. Uh, it's time for if if you want to practice on a gun, well, you can practice on a high point. If it's you're like, well, I, you know, I don't want to do this on my my Daniel Defense gun. Of course, if you're good. Uh, or if you have all the gear, you can always start over again. <laughs> you can do it. And if you don't like it, you can start over again. Uh, but you could practice on a uh, on a high point C9, or you could practice on a high point carbine. Uh, you could have the the you could have a firearm finish on a high point carbine that is worth that costs more than the gun itself costs. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've been guilty of that, uh, over the years, I've been guilty of having more upgrades and accessories on the gun than the gun actually was worth. <laughs> Someone said to me, like, you're the only guy I know that has a $400 gun with a thousand dollars worth of upgrades on it. I'm like, I can't be the only one. <laughs> you remember the, Jared, you, you remember the, uh, the Springfield Armory Scout Rifle, the 22 Hornet yeah. 410? Yeah, yeah, when 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 those things when, wasn't that when, the one? Yeah, when you could the get them. Under. Yeah, the right. over under one. When you could get those, they were really inexpensive. Uh, back in the nineties, you could get them for less than two hundred bucks. Like seriously, one hundred ninety nine bucks. Awesome. Yeah, one hundred ninety nine bucks, one hundred eighty nine bucks on sale, stuff like that. And I got that. And there was a local person that was doing the cryogenic barrel treatments. That's where they deep freeze it, and it's kind of like. You know, when you, when you uh, forge things and you heat them up, you remove impurities by heating it. Well, once it's finished, obviously you don't want to heat it up again because that will ruin the rifling. But what you can do is you can do a cryogenic. And if you don't know about this, cryogenic processing actually has been done on machine parts and engine parts for a long, long time. But gun people just recently discovered to do it. So if you cryo a barrel, it actually makes it easier to clean. It removes impurities. Uh, so I had that. I, I sent that barrel off and had it cryoed, and then I had it uh, duracoated, and so I got four or five hundred dollars worth of upgrades into a gun that was a uh, hundred ninety nine bucks. <laughs> and you're like a hundred ninety nine. I just went on Gun Broker, and those are yeah. That's what happens when things aren't available anymore and you can only get them on a gun broker. But, uh, so uh, my point is, is if you want to practice, get yourself a high point C9 and practice. And I, I've actually seen some people that have done some pretty cool stuff uh, with high points. 
I've seen people do pretty cool, pretty cool Duracoat finishes uh, on high points. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with that. You know, do it. You're an American. You're allowed. You know, you're allowed. So uh, check those guys out uh, at uh, the uh, the NRA annual meeting. They're going to be at the NRA annual meeting, as are we. We're going to be at the NRA annual meeting. Uh, and they will be there. And did, did we have a booth number for them last time? I cannot remember. I remember that we that I, I, I screwed up and I said somebody else's booth number. But uh, uh, but if you're there, okay, here we go. Uh, just for funsies, I looked up the M6 Scout Rifle, a used 22 LR Scout Rifle, current bid on Gunbroker, 255 bucks. That's not bad. Oh, then there's another one that's 595 bucks, and then there's a stainless steel one that's 1200. Dude. 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 1200? Oh, that's 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 a uh, stainless steel though. That's cray cray. That is cray squared, man. Woo! Oh, uh, but any hooser, there you go. Do what you want to do. Live your life how you want to live it. There you go. Oh, this is, uh, I'm glad that this came up. Juxy.com. We've been talking about Juxy.com for a long time. And the reason we mention it is because Juxy is not N-O-T. They are not beholden to Google. They are not beholden to YouTube. So if YouTube, Google, fascist book, whatever, meta, if they decide to throw a hissy fit or a tantrum because we don't like guns anymore, mama, mama, nana, mana, uh, it won't affect Juxi because, well, the people who own Juxi don't care what Google has to say and they don't care what YouTube has to say. And so uh, you don't have to worry about your channel just mysteriously disappearing one morning. And you say, okay, cool story, bro, but that doesn't happen. Oh, doesn't it? So you know that we're very close with the folks at Ready Man, and uh, we have a symbiotic relationship with them. Ready Man has been providing education, motivation, inspiration on their Instagram channel for several years now. Uh, And this last week, they... uh, now, the folks at Ready Man woke up to a note from Meta telling them, uh, your posts have violated our community guidelines and your channel is removed. Thank you. Have a nice day. They had 150,000 uh, followers on Instagram. And if you followed them on Instagram, you'll know that nothing that they posted was controversial. Nothing they posted was out of the, was like wild and crazy. And first of all, uh, it should not be the job of anyone to censor any type of speech, uh, as regardless of the speech. But uh, if you don't think it can happen to you, ladies and gentlemen, it can. We've been telling you, that it can and will happen to you eventually. Eventually, you know, you're just whistling past the graveyard. You know, you're like, maybe they won't notice me. And uh, then one day you wake up and you get a little note, a little note from them saying, oh, hey, uh, we don't like what you said. So, your channel is gone. Bye. How do you prevent that? Well, the only way really right now to prevent that is, uh, well, for at least for videos, is is to go to Juxy.com. If you go to Juxy.com and you start a channel, you can import all of your stuff from YouTube or wherever, and that way you don't have to worry, wow, maybe one day I'm going to wake up and YouTube, Google, Meta, whatever, decides that they hate me because I violated their arbitrary community guidelines. And uh, I, I like to think that someday in the in the distant future that uh, our grandkids will have a handle on stuff and they'll say, you remember when 
when censorship, when the code for censorship was community guidelines. You remember when they decided to not censor, but use community guidelines as their excuse to censor people, and we finally got hip to it and decided that we didn't want to play that game anymore? I hope that our grandkids can do that. J-U-X-X-I, Juxi.com. Get over there and follow the Student of the Gun channel. All right. Open up both your ears. Listen louder. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. All right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, that brings us right up to our Brownells bullet points of the week. And uh, this week, we're going to talk about handguns. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to uh, I have to correct what I just said. Uh, I made a mistake. I said handgun. And uh, according to the uh, the myriad uh, fuds and a holes on the internet, uh, when I refer to a firearm as a gun, that disqualifies me because the the only gun is is on a battleship, and the thing you're holding is a rifle. And when you use the term gun, it just shows what an amateur you are. So uh, I guess we for now on we have to refer to it as a hand weapon. It's a hand weapon. And cause so I said, really? I said, what about handguns and shotguns and submachine guns? Are those guns or should we start saying hand weapon? What is, what is that you're carrying there? It's a, it's a Remington 870 shot weapon. It's an Uzi submachine weapon. As we've got an Uzi submachine weapon here. That's right. <laughs> people all, need better all, hobbies of all the things going on in the world right now that's the thing that people yep. are freaking yep freaking that's the that's the uh, thing people are concerned about they're con- very concerned about that so uh brownells what's going on at brownells brownells.com the brand new website if you haven't been there you're wrong they took all that time and effort to create a brand new website so get your butt over there why, why haven't you gone there yet uh, i don't know uh, I don't know either, so I guess no excuses. So uh, what do we got on sale? We've got Sega handguns on sale. We have uh, Smith & Wesson handguns on sale. They have, what else do we have here? The Taurus handguns are on sale. They have the, oh, I'm going down, 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 down. Looks like all the Smith guns are on sale. Oh, the Mossberg, the MC2 Charlie, uh, they got the MC2C, uh, is on sale. Oh, it's back ordered. Sorry, you guys bought them all out. Before I could get to the radio, you guys bought them all out. Well, here's the deal. They're running a special. They're running a sale. They've sent this out, sent this out to all of their people, all of their people, and so they're buying up the guns. So if you want to get in on that, you need to get in on it now. Now, if you'd like to actually handle a firearm, if you'd like to handle a rifle or a shot weapon or a hand weapon, uh, you can actually do so because they have a massive pro shop gun shop in Grinnell, Iowa, right off of Interstate 80. Uh, If you go there, in case you guys didn't know, uh, if you go to the uh, pro shop gun shop in uh, the Brownells facility, in Grinnell. It's open to the public. You can pull off the, the interstate there and go to the great big parking lot and go inside. They have hundreds, thousands of hand weapons, shot weapons, rifles. And also, in addition to that, anything that's in the catalog is available to you. You're like, dude, they have 800,000 SKUs. There's no way in that, that, that 
pro shop is big enough to hold 800,000 SKUs. And you're correct. It is not big enough. But here's what you do. You go up to the counter and they open up the, you open up the computer or you we actually, they have like little counters. You can walk over to them, open them up. You can open up the website and choose what you want, click it and uh, order it. And it'll send a message to the back back, to the far back. And someone will go, some mystery human will go to a shelf, pull that item off of the shelf, stick it in a, a magical cart in a, in a bin, and it'll whoop, 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 and it'll show up, bing, in the pro shop. Then you go up to the counter, and they, they call you up there like, order number, <laughs> whatever, 1795. Your order's up. And you're like, woo, and you go over there to the counter, and, and they said, is this what you ordered? And you're like, yeah, that's magic. That's crazy. They have like hundreds of little elves in the backpack, and, and they're just sitting around on stools waiting for you to come and ask for a product, and they jump off the stool, and they run over, and they pick it, and they throw it in a bin, and send it down the conveyor belt, and it magically appears. It's like Wonka's Chocolate Factory, only for guns. I so wonder if they sing. I wonder what songs they the, sing. The the, uh, the 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 Oompa Loompas back there in the in the Brownells warehouse will they'll pick your product, put it in a red bin, and send it out to you. So <laughs> if you don't believe me, go and check it out. And while you're waiting for the Oompa Loompas to pick your product, you can just sip on a a, a delicious cup of coffee that's complimentary. There you go. <laughs> Isn't that right, Roy? Roy says, Roy says yes. <laughs> Check Deep out Roy our- from Chocolate Factory 2. What's that? The Deep Roy from the second Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie? Mm-mm. Nope, not that one. All right, so uh, yeah, that's it. Check out our buddies at Brownells and let them know that Student of the Gun sent you. All right, Zach's going to tell you what's what. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the Pimp Hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And over at ShopSOTG.com right now, uh, we have cool. the brand new, or not brand new to you, uh, water purifiers from our friends over at Lifesaver. We met them and made their acquaintance during SHOT Show this year. And right now on ShopSOTG.com, you can get one of their fantastic water purifying products. We got the tiny one, which is, it's a little, like, look, you almost fit in your pocket, called the Wayfarer. It's a little, uh, I'll put well, it up on the screen. It's not tiny. But, it's not yeah. tiny, but it's it's not giant like the jerry can. Which I'm yeah, the jerry can. You actually pump water into that sucker, and it holds the water. Yeah, but if you are looking at the screen right now, if you are watching on Discord Live, you have the uh, privilege of being able to do this right here. Boom! Is the Lifesaver Wayfarer water purifier. If you listen to this, just the audio version, you have to go to shopsotg.com to see it for yourself. Yep. But born from the spirit of adventure, the Lifesaver Wayfarer is compact and robust, making dirty microbiology contaminated water safe to drink. Uh, so it's, it's small enough to fit inside your backpack or definitely in your car. Yep. And, and yeah. What's the, how many gallons of water does that, will that filter? Well, Jared, I'm glad you asked because it will filter approximately 1,320 U.S. gallons or 5,000 liters if you're a communist. Oh, my God. That's right. That's so that. Water. So I, I don't need to tell you how heavy a thousand gallons of water is. Uh, the, the, you know, people that that has always been that's always been one of the things for the bug outs, for the 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 you know camping, for the whatever is. Well, we need to take water with us. Okay, water is weight. Water is water's heavy. It just it is. Uh, and you you can't get around that, and you can only carry so much water, whether it's on your back in a pack, whether it's in a vehicle. I mean, think about it. It's like, well, I, I got a vehicle, so I'm gonna load up what fifty gallons of water. Fifty gallons of water times what eight point three two or something, whatever it is, pounds per eight point three four eight point three four uh per pounds per gallon. So 
add that up. Or you can take a, wa- a container and a water filter, and if you can get to a source. And the thing is, no, I don't want you sticking your head down in a stream or a pond or a puddle or whatever and just sucking the water out. But here's the deal, man. Uh, it's like this. It, nobody can ever say, you know, like um, whether it's it's antibacterial cream or whatever. They never say kills 100% of all bacteria why because they say that like that one time that 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 super mysterious virus that they just created in a lab in the ukraine the u.s bio lab in ukraine uh that'll be the one that gets through so they're like it it stops 99.9999999997 percent of all bacteria viruses cysts now there's two things you got when it comes to water filters You have filtration and purification. Filtration just takes out any, like, crap that's in the water, right? Like, little tiny flecks of dirt or metal or whatever, you know, crap. um, That takes that out. Purification removes the bioweapons, right? The viruses and the bacterias and stuff like that. So, if you put... For instance, you say, well, I have the little iodine tablets, and I bloop, bloop, drop those into my canteen, shake it up, wait 30 minutes, drink the water. It tastes like, Bleh, but it's it's purified. So iodine tablets will kill all the bacteria and viruses, but iodine tablets don't filter the water. So if you scooped it up out of a pond, anything, you know, whatever, <laughs> that was in that water uh grit or nasty or heavy metals or whatever nickel cadmium blah 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 rust uh that stuff will still be in there the iodine tablets don't remove that so when you use something like this lifesaver you're filtering it and you're purifying it also so you're doing two things not just one uh, and yeah but the uh, that is it is relatively compact it's super lightweight it weighs less than a pound it's a let the whole kit for the Wayfarer is 11 ounces. So for 11 ounces of weight, you can filter 5,000 liters of water or 1,300 gallons of water. That's a pretty good trade-off. It's a pretty good trade-off. So, uh, yeah. If you think about it, and this is when you say, well, why, why would that be a thing? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Why in our modern world would you need to be able to purify and filter water? Gee, I don't know. I don't know. Why would that even be a thing? <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Let's go ahead and move on now. And so what are they going to do, Jared or Zach? Where are they going to go? Shop SOTG.com. It's on the homepage right now. Yep. It's on the homepage right now. Uh, dudes. Do you know us? I do. Do you, do you guys out in the audience know us? Do we recommend so. stuff that's crap? Jared, have we ever recommended products that are crap? No. No. Question mark? Yeah. If I say to get yeah. something, I'm not screwing around. Yeah, the, the the other day, someone tried to challenge us, me, we, us, um, on fascist book. They're like, ah, you always say buy stuff. I'm like, and someone jumped in there like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Thank you, whoever did this. They're like, when Paul says to buy a book, he doesn't come out and, and willy-nilly say, ah, buy this book. No, if Paul says to buy a book, you buy the book. If Paul says this is as cheap as ammo is going to get, you should buy it, you should do that. Uh, and when I say that every human being in your house needs to have clean water to drink what no when did that start yeah i don't know when did that start people like well i'll just drink coffee yes i don't drink water i drink coffee i get all my water in my coffee okay cool cool story bro all right let's move on to our student of the gun homeroom All right, bing, bang, boom. The main theme of the Student of the Gun homeroom 
has been and continues to be, are you able to be dangerous on demand? Yes or no? Yes or no? For instance, I've had people say, well, I need a good car safe because I I can't carry my gun on me all the time, but I want to have a gun around me, so I'm going to put it in a car safe. And I was like, that is a cool story, bro, but that doesn't make you dangerous on demand. That means that eventually, at some point in time, you might be able to get to your gun, but you're not dangerous on demand. You're dangerous on demand when you actually carry it. Crazy. We got a story from Houston, uh, Houston, Texas, uh, which is one of uh, several embarrassments. Uh, The existence of the city of Houston is a colossal embarrassment to the Republic of Texas, but I digress. Um, What happened recently, oh, just like two days ago, uh, in the... uh, uh, the Southwest Houston area. Jared. Jared's going to tell us in just a second. Yeah, it says suspect killed while trying to rob food truck on South Main Street in Southwest Houston. Huh. The robbery suspect is dead after he shot or he was shot while trying to hold up a food truck in Southwest Houston. According to the Houston Police Department, the robbery happened about 1 p.m. on Tuesday in the one ad pop-up. Awesome. He went in the one ad pop-up. 500 block. <laughs> many Christmas. In the one, it's the 14,500 block of South Main Street at Fondren. Derek Howard, an owner of Elite Eats and Cold Treats, was on his way to the food truck to meet his mother, who is a co-owner, and his uncle, who were working the truck during the lunch hour. Before he arrived, police said the, su- the suspect approached the food truck asking what kind of food they serve. The su- suspect then tried robbing them, but Howard's mother and uncle quickly closed the window. The suspect got out of his truck, opened the food truck's window, and pointed a gun inside. Police said the suspect fired his gun, but it jammed. So he got a shot off. Yep. Thank God, Jacqueline Mitchell, a family member, said. She's a godly woman. That's why the gun jammed because God jammed it because there because when the suspect opened that window, he could have shot her, but it jammed. That's when the woman pulled out her own gun and fired multiple times. Howard's mother is licensed to carry a gun. Nowadays, Good thing they put that to. in there. Yeah. Nowadays you have to, Howard said when he asked if his mother kept a gun on her out of fear that something similar would happen. It's bad. No kidding. The suspect tried running away, but fell and died in the parking lot. Howard said the food truck had only made forty dollars for the day at the time of the robbery. (laughs) So, was that was that forty bucks worth your life, bro? You're Uh, yeah. You need to get a job instead of trying to rob people because some people are trying to make an honest living. No kidding. The woman, the woman was taken to the hospital for a panic attack, according to police. No one is charged in the case, as police call it self defense. No kidding. Well, you know, eventually collect evidence and present it to the DA's office. Yeah. Eventually what's going to happen is either the good people of the United States of America, screw the rest of the world, either the good people of the United States of America are going to get a clue, be dangerous on demand, and they're going to we're either going to kill all of the monsters or the monsters are going to kill us. See that that's how that works. It's the simple the simple answer is when he's like people need they're they're not you bad. That's not gonna happen. We have fostered an environment where we coddle the criminals in the United States. We've allowed liberalism to creep into all of our institutions. Look at California, look at New York State, look at Illinois, look at New Jersey. Uh, they coddle criminals. You can rob a bank in New York get arrested, go into the jail, sign your name on a piece of paper, and walk out the same day. That's not true. It happens all the time. Remember the story? Dude robbed three banks in three days. Every time he got arrested, they just made him sign a piece of paper. Was it California that just... uh, issued the the new list of non-arrestable no it's illinois 
non-arrestable offenses where they won't e- they'll issue you a citation, won't even take you oh, to yeah, jail. I, I just saw this. Yeah, and some of them are like sexual assault, uh, manslaughter. What was it? Manslaughter? Wasn't kidnapping one of them? What's that? Wasn't kidnapping one of them? Yeah, um, I think so. And arson, I know, was one. Yeah, arson. So on on one hand, you have the you have the criminal government, which has been infected by the disease of of liberalism, wokeism, socialism, whatever you want to call it. So you got the government that tells you you shouldn't have a gun. That's why we have police. And you're like, really? Because I called the police and they said, yeah, we don't we don't come for that kind of stuff anymore. So uh, you can just come down to the police station after you've been robbed and fill out a report. Remember the uh, story we just had about the uh, the cougar attacks, the mountain lion attacks? We just did that a couple days ago or last week. And I said, we're seeing a pattern here. The, the victims don't shoot the mountain lions. They call 911. They call the authorities. The authorities put in some effort to try and find the offending mountain lion. And then they, well, what is the follow-up story? Well, they tracked it, but they didn't find it. So they gave up. That's exactly what's happening in the cities of America, Chicago, Philadelphia, New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco. You get attacked, you get assaulted. You don't shoot the monster. You don't shoot them. They go away. You call the police. They come, take a report. They tell you, we looked for them, but we didn't find them. So, okay. And just like the mountain lion, just like the bear, just like the coyote, when an animal decides, I'm going to, I smell people, I see people, I'm going to kill them and eat them or I'm just going to kill them because I'm mean. Uh, Once they've made that decision, they don't unmake it. Once a bear, a lion, a whatever becomes a, quote, man-eater. See, we used to use that all the time. We used to use that terminology all the time, a man-eater. That, that, you know, uh, there's a tiger in the jungle and it's a man-eater because it's killed three villagers. Now, see, in, in those scenarios... When, when they realized there was a tiger that was a man-eater, back in the old days, what all the adult men would do was they would load up and they would go out and they would find that tiger because they knew, like, if we don't stop this thing, it's just going to keep killing people. Well, the exact same thing is occurring in our cities with predators, these predatory humans. If they prey upon you and get away with it, they're not going to stop. And the police are not going to stop them. Because what we've seen, and the the current playbook for American law enforcement, for American uh, prosecutorial, uh, you know, the, you've got these people, in these, these liberal left-wing scumbag prosecutors in L.A., Chicago, fill in the blank. They don't even try to put these people in jail. Jared, what did you, well, you were just at the you were just at the at the firearms mecca of America, and the the modern Moses, the the firearms Moses who came down off the mountain with the tablets. What did he? What did Jeff Cooper say about if violent crime is to be curbed? Then the the uh, the crapheads must fear their victims. That's. The only way for violent crime to be curbed is for the criminals to fear their victims because they don't fear the police. They don't fear the courts. They don't, they don't, they're not afraid to be arrested. They're not afraid to go to jail. Most of them don't. And if they go to jail, they don't stay there very long. They're not afraid of the cops. They're not afraid of the judges and the juries. The only way for violent crime to be curbed is to make the criminals afraid of their victims. Cooper said that 30, 40 years ago, and he was absolutely right when he said it, and it still applies today. So good job, lady in Houston who shot this scumbag. And there's one less scumbag.
That's right. There's one less scumbag. Uh, there is one fewer, I guess, one fewer scumbag uh, in you Houston. play her interview? Uh, no, we need to move on. Okay. So, I know when we did, was it, it was last Wednesday as we were doing the show, this story broke. It was breaking as we were doing the show. Which seems to be, is it A, where we do a lot of shows, or B, it's just, remember when we used to occasionally take vacations, and every time we would t- step away from the microphone for two weeks, like the world would explode, and there were things yeah. that people needed us to talk about? Yeah. Yep. So, as you know, a, a liberal lunatic... A, a liberal lunatic, a, a criminal monster, decided that they were going to go to a Christian school and murder people. And uh, this liberal lunatic monster is part of this psychotic transgender cult, which our government is fostering, which our government is promoting. Our government is complicit in in promoting our federal government is complicit in promoting mental illness because human beings, uh, in case you didn't go to school, I'm going to tell you this because I went to school. Human beings are animals and animals are divided into two basic classifications. An animal is either born a male or an animal is born a female. And in order for the species to continue, you need both. Can't just have one. Got to have both, right? And that's the way God made us, and that's the way it's been since the beginning of time. But here we are in the early in the early stages of the 21st century, and mental illness has been allowed to creep up and been and is being expressed as the norm. Mental illness is being is being portrayed as normalcy. It's not. Mental illness is still mental illness, no matter what fancy, new, cool, woke label you put on it. There is no such thing as transgenderism. It's think speak. It's gobbledygook. You had a father and you had a mother. Yes. You don't know that. Yeah, I do. Because if you're a living human right now and you're listening to me, you had a father and a mother. Your father determined the sex because case you guys didn't go to school the egg is a blank slate the egg in the mother's womb is a blank slate an egg is not a female egg it's not a male egg it's just an egg it's a blank slate it is not until the spermatozoa until the sperm uh, makes contact with the egg and then the cells start splitting and dividing and multiplying because the dad the male determines the sex of the animal If that egg becomes a female egg, well, the father determined it. That sperm was a female, had the sperm, had the female chromosomes. And if it's a male, well, it's like with the joke about Henry VIII. He kept having daughters and he kept changing wives to try and mix things up. And back then, no one would like raise their hand. They're like, whoa, (laughs) it's not them, bro. It's you. (laughs) You can keep changing wives all you want, but that's not going to change. It's you. (laughs) You know, some men just produce lots and lots of, you know, female chromosome sperm. I've known lots of dudes that had all daughters, right? You know, they had all daughters. They kept trying for sons and, you know, two, three, four. Who were we just talking to? We were talking to somebody and they they had three daughters and the wife's like, let's just try one more time. And he's like, okay, we'll try one more time to have a son. And they ended up with twin daughters on the fourth try. And they're like, all right, stop. Just snip, sip. You're all done producing daughters, hippie. (laughs) But this, this transgenderism is gobbledygook. First of all, um, I'm going to say this again. And and, uh, just for those of you in, in the cheap seats, we do not supplant the word gender for sex. All right, uh, and it, 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 it infuriates me that people don't know how to use the language correctly. And if you think that it's not a big deal to change the language, you really need to extricate 
your crane your cranium from your rectum because it is a big deal to change the language changing the language is how we tame people changing the language is how we politically condition people the language has been changed deliberately to condition you to brainwash you to condition and tame you if you don't understand this you need to read a book called the rape of the mind by a a, a doctor named Eust Mirlu. 10 bucks on Amazon, free on Kindle if you have the Kindle app, free on uh, Audible if you have the Audible app. Get it, read it, listen to it. I challenge every single person in my audience to get that book and read the first two chapters, just the first two. Read the first two. In there, he discusses, he talks about how we, how the state alters the language deliberately to create a narrative to condition the thinking of the people. Soviet Union is probably one of the most famous users of that. Everyone's comrade. You have to say comrade, right? The Nazis. When you greet someone, Heil Hitler, every time, out of your mouth, Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler. You know, in Soviet Union, comrade, comrade colonel, comrade sergeant, comrade blah, 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 You have to. You're not encouraged to. You have to. And if you don't say it, people are like, whoa, what's wrong with this guy? You, you need to say that. You have to speak those words. That's political conditioning. When they decided 25 some years ago to start to switch from the using the word sex, which is doesn't mean... Okay, I'm going to keep peachy. But sex is a determination. There are two answers. If you look at a cow or a cattle, a, a, a bovine or an equine or a canine, you look at a dog. You say, is that dog? What sex is that dog? There's two answers. Male, female. That's it. There's, all right. And the, one of the reasons that we make teenagers or kids or whatever in high school, the reason you take a foreign language in high school is to stimulate your brain. You guys understand that, right? Brain stimulation. One of the most important reasons we, that we have our kids take, when I went to high school, you had to take at least one, foreign, uh, one semester or one year of a foreign language. You could choose, when I was in uh, Detroit, you could choose German, French, or Latin. And then they changed it up, you know, as time went by. And then there's French, Spanish, German, and then German, Spanish, you know, whatever. Uh, French, French, Spanish, and German. The Romance languages are generally the most popular ones. But uh, the reason we do that, the reason that you make your 14 and 15-year-olds take Spanish, German, French, Latin, whatever, is so that they have to stop and think before they speak. Jared, you took a foreign language, right? Which one did you take? Yeah. German, right? German. Okay. So when you're in class and your teacher wants you to say, to say something like, how do I f- get to the airport? Or, you know, do you have any fresh pretzels today? Or whatever, you know. You have to stop. Use your brain. Think about what you're about to say. Then say it. You see, by the time we have... Teenagers. By the time teenagers are fourteen and fifteen years old, they've they've basically gotten to the point where their mouths are on autopilot, and often they don't engage their brains before the words come spilling out from that hole under their nose. Right. So when you have a kid engage in a foreign language, you make them take a foreign language. They have to stop and think before they write. They have to stop and think before they speak which is a good thing. That's a good trait in humans. I, I think that Solomon would, have, would approve of that trait in humans. The, the ability to stop and formulate the answer in your brain before you open the hole under your nose and noise starts coming out of it. Not only that, but in foreign language, you learn there's a term called gender. I, this is what I discovered in 1981 when I took German. Because when you're referring to objects or animals, there are three answers. There's masculine, feminine, or neutral. 
A cow is feminine. A bull is masculine. A lamp is neutral. A lamp isn't a he or a she. A lamp is an it. A rock is an it. All right. A car is an it. And you're like, no, my car has a woman's name. I'm like, okay, I, your car has a woman's name. Okay. Yeah. Well, every but, every man's car has a woman's name. <laughs> it's Charlene. Get, or your or your rifle. If you went to boot camp in the '60s, your rifle has a has a girl's name. But the answer to the gender question is threefold, and it's not male or female because male or female refers to sex. Gender is masculine, feminine, or neutral. That's it. And when you when you speak Spanish. I can only imagine how people who speak Spanish, German, Italian, French, whatever, how they view Americans with their psychotic gender pronoun crap. Can you imagine that? They probably look at us like we're mentally ill eh, because we are. So a mentally ill person go into a school Zach, do you have the audio, and and you're going to have to forgive me. I know we talked about this together. Do you have the audio of the sheriff who said that that they found evidence that this monster, this psychotic, lunatic monster, chose this school because she knew that they didn't have security? She knew that there wouldn't be an armed person there to stop her. And they, they yeah, I saw the. I do not have this available right now. That. Okay. Well, look, look uh, for, I'll, I'll, I'll find it. Okay. So, lessons learned. Number one, unlike Uvalde, where the, the, uh, the cowards in blue uniforms stood around looking at their cell phones while children were being slaughtered. Yes. Every officer in Uvalde in that school should be stripped of their credentials, they should be charged with dereliction, and they should never, ever, ever be allowed to be police officers in the United States of America. They're all cowards. They failed the people of Uvalde. Now, the Nashville Metro Police decided that they were not going to emulate the cowardice, the despicable vomitous, sickening cowardice of the Uvalde police who stood around while children were being murdered. Just just stood there. It's sickening. What they did instead was they immediately ran, they hustled toward the sound of gunfire. And so rather than dozens being helpless and slaughtered, we had a death toll of six which is terrible, but it's better than when cowards in uniform stand around in a hallway looking at their cell phones while children are being slaughtered yards while away. We're talking about this, yeah, while we're talking about this part portion of the event, um, I've seen people asking questions of why the footage, the body cam footage was released so fast this time, but in previous times it's it's taken a long time and and the reason that I believe that is the case is because this time the police did what they were supposed to do, and there wasn't anything that they had to wait for the public to kind of cool down. They a didn't have bit. to filter it. Yeah, they didn't have to filter it and, and make sure that the police didn't look bad in that situation. You remember they actually did when you Uvalde to do. fought to not release it? Yes. Because it made them look terrible. Yeah. That's and, why. And there was... I, I just I've seen a bunch of people on the internet asking that it's like well why did they release it so fast this time, and I've seen some that are saying that they, well they had the video prepped I was like I don't I don't think that's the case I think that in this event the police did what they were supposed to do, and so they didn't have any reason to drag to out the release they didn't need to hide it they didn't need to hide the cowardice of their actions and Uvalde they true. attempted to hide the cowardice of their actions. Yeah, I got the video you asked for prepared. Okay, go ahead and play it. But because of a uh, threat assessment by the suspect, uh, too much security, they decided not to. And that area was here in Nashville, so we're continuing with that investigation as well. 
it was the only school that was targeted. Uh, there was another location that was mentioned, uh, but because of a, a threat assessment by the suspect, uh, too much security, they decided not to. And that area was here in Nashville, so we're continuing with that investigation as well. It was there. You go. So imagine that she decided. Also, I just this, to, go ahead. I just want to say, yeah, you're you're completely right about the dude standing over their shoulder doing the sign language. It looks so stupid. And I, I, like, like, oh, deaf people, we have like the best subtitle technology in the world. It's 21st century. Well, what if they're blind? Don't you need? Yeah, that? they they can't see yeah. the subtitles if they're blind. But it's like just put subtitles on the screen. Don't have the dude back there like making it's, faces and flailing his hands around. It's, it's PC. It, it it's just a, it's a hundred percent. It's a hundred percent. It's 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 smoking. Okay, it, it's virtue even, signaling. Even, it's smoke and mirrors. It's it's but, it's retarded. Okay, let's get back to the topic now. But you're right. Thank you for noticing that. Yeah. So in in, in the 21st century, when everything can be subtitled as it's being or, said, or, or not. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, so. Uh, do you remember? Do you remember the terrorist thing when the when this the CNN journalist was interviewing? It was a fake terrorist, and she was interviewing him, and he's like, "And we are here, and we're dead to America." And he's like, "Are you subtitling me?" Because you, you subtitle. I went to to Princeton. I know how to speak. You subtitling me? You guys don't remember that? It was funny. But anyway, uh, getting back on track. So ask yourself this: You're a rational thinking human. I hope. If this was a Jewish school and a killer went to the Jewish school and murdered, it was a a Jewish school, would not the first thing out of CNN, NBC, would be anti-Semitism. If this was an all-black inner city school, teachers are black, kids are black, students are black, janitors are black, Lunch lady's white. No, I'm kidding. Um, if a white killer went into an all-black inner city school, what do you think the news would say about that? It's, it's racially it's charged, a- right? Uh, all right, let's 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 go even one farther. Let's say that this was an all-Muslim school. This was a, do they have those? They have all-Muslim schools where no infidels are allowed? And an infidel went to an all-Muslim school and killed Muslim teachers and Muslim students. Do you think the media would be silent about that? And they're like, oh, we don't know. We don't know this was, this was motivated by that. Really? Really? It would be Islamophobia. Yeah. Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, racism. No, but in America, there's one group of people that's, well, free game, open season. You can attack them on TV. You can attack them in movies. You can disparage them. You can literally murder them in droves, and the media will excuse it and ignore it and pretend it didn't happen. And that is Christians. And you get bonus points for killing white Christians. Now, Zach, the, the video audio clip I put in here, it's a little bit long, but it's worth it. Uh, what I want you to do is open it up. And the, what the gentleman is explaining is he said, look, is this is what they don't want you to remember was said. All the clips that they're and here, here's the deal. Remember when we uh, showed you guys the montage of local channel 5, 7, 8, 12, 13, 1, 9, 17, whatever. And they all said threat to our democracy, threat to our democracy, threat to our democracy, threat to our democracy. And that was just one more piece of evidence that the people on the news don't say anything on their own. They're all given scripts, and they're told what to say. They're told which narrative to push. Well, what we have right now is we have a montage of anti-Christian narrative. And it's being, but let me tell you what. It wasn't Joel Osteen walking into a Christian school, going to a school murdering people. All right. It's not Billy Graham or Franklin Graham walking into malls and, and churches and so forth murdering people. It's not red hat wearing conservative Christian Trump voters that are murdering people. 
The media won't talk about it, but we can. Because every time we've discovered this, they're left-leaning lunatics. Remember when that Republican shot up the Democrat softball game in an attempt to murder a uh, Democrat congressman? Oh, that's right. That was the exact opposite. It was a hardcore Clinton Democrat that shot up the Republican softball practice. Jared or Zach, what I would like you to do is cue up this audio and the gentleman is explaining, go right up to where the uh, um, the audio clips from the various hags and witches. There's hags and witches. Um, and it, it's interesting to me that the media has decided that the people they're going to send out to disparage Christians and attack Christians are, are witches. They, they seem to be using women, females of the human sex or the, uh, the animal, the female species uh, to do this. If you got it, go ahead and play it. Listen to do this. Do you by chance have like a time thing? Because this is eight minutes long. A timestamp? Uh, you said go up to the thing where they start, and I have no idea where that it would be. Yeah, well, he, essentially, the, the, uh, the gentleman is talking, and... And he explains it, and he says, he, he, and he said, look, this is what they don't want you to remember that they it, said. It, is it pretty much as soon as the bald guy with the facial hair stops being on the screen? Yep, that's, that's exactly it. Okay, then I've got, I found it. So these hags, like they want you to know yeah, that Christians are the greatest threat to America. Playing in three, two, one. I'm here to warn you about a growing threat to the laws and values of the United States from a group of religious extremists and fanatics. No, I'm not referring to so-called jihadists or Islamists or to creeping Sharia. I'm referring to what I like to call the Christian Taliban, those Bible-thumping fundamentalists who are bent on theocratizing the U.S. government. I think what was interesting is that she said that um, Jesus tells Mike Pence things to say. Um, when was she around I mean, Mike Pence, though? Well, because obviously she was around him. Uh, a lot more than I think that, that we all know about Mike Pence. But I, what I do know about Mike Pence is I went to law school in Indiana. He is a hated figure there, actually. He's not very popular at all. And I Why? think when you have a Mike Pence that now sort of puts this religious veneer on things and calls people values voters i think we're in a dangerous situation look i'm catholic I, i'm a faithful person but, but i don't know if i want my vice president but, um, you well, know speaking in tongues and having jesus speak like to i him. said before i don't know if i want it's that. one thing to talk to jesus it's another thing when jesus talks to you exactly okay <laughs> illness if i'm not correct but no, I, I i'm hearing voices you enjoy as it is as, 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 as a christian that's just part par for the course you talk to jesus jesus talk back what concerns me is how long is the conversation but jesus with is jesus. telling him to say that I mean, yeah. but that's what i'm saying you you know because i talk with I Jerry, jesus Jerry, for a parking space can he talk can, my question is can he talk to mary magdalene without his wife in the room <laughs> i don't know i i you know i I just think that does when when everything is you you are saying Jesus is I think every in the, even in the Bible it says do all things in moderation so anything that is too much is concerning but do we want our politics um, <laughs> serve to us with a, vol a religious veneer no. over sure we find in all of our studies that we're looking at these things with national survey data we find that when white Americans hear the language of Christian nationalism when they hear that uh, about Christian heritage and Christian values they they tend to think uh, with nostalgia for a time where people like us, the right kind of people, had cultural and political influence. When, uh, say, people of color, African Americans, for example, hear Christian nationalist language, they, they often think more aspirationally for, for, uh, in terms of accountability, the kind of nation that we never quite lived up to our own values. And so we call white Christian nationalism this, this ideology that seeks to, to take back America for, uh, for all, lack of a better uh, phrasing, uh, white, ethnically white, racially white, traditional conservative Americans. Again, people like us, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene thinks. One of the strangest things about January the 6th for a lot of Americans was how many people in the pro-Trump crowd advertised their religious faith. And amid the violence, you could see people in skull masks carrying Bibles, flags that read, Jesus is my savior, Trump is my president. 
Some people literally carried crosses to the Capitol and led prayer groups on that day. What exactly is Christian nationalism? According to Christianity Today, it is a mass movement that believes the American nation is defined by... All right, go ahead and pull it down. So their, their rhetoric now is Christian nationalism. And that's bad. And that's a threat. And I, apparently, I don't you have to be a white how, person like the to one be a dude Christian. was talking about. Yeah, I was to say the one dude was talking about how black Christians think differently than white Christians. Like, what? Well, see, so you can't. You can't. You got to be careful. What? You can't. You got to be careful not to offend, like people of color who also happen to be Christians. So what you do is you're like, oh no, no, you guys are, you you. People of color who are, are Christians, you're okay. But it's it's the it's the white nationalist Christians. That's the ones that are the problem. So all of this was said, all of this has been on television, all of this has been out there, and then this liberal left wing psychotic lunatic goes to a Christian school to slaughter Christians, and the media says uh, it's 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 too early to say whether this was a, a hate crime. It's it's too early to say whether this was m- they were motivated to. She just wanted to she just wanted to kill Christians. We we it's, he can't say that. We can't jump to that conclusion. We can't because sir, as God made little green apples, if a white shooter kills a black person, it's a race crime. If someone walks into a synagogue and starts shooting, it's a race crime. It's a hate crime. Instantly. But when you kill Christians, like, oh, come on now. Just, that's, come on. We just can't jump to conclusions. We can't just say that. We don't know. Oh, but every other time you knew. Jared, I want, what. here's what I want to know. Let's go, let's go back in the Wayback Machine. Are we going to find out what flags this psych, this lunatic chick had in her bedroom and ban them? Are we going to find out what uh, books she had and ban them? Because remember... Something I was talking to Alex about the other day. What was it, banning books or... No, just the, the stark difference in when it, uh, a, a white guy who is straight and has a Confederate flag in his room or whatever how the stark difference between that and then this event where it's a, we have to immediately release all the information about the, the douchebag and also go through everything that he's got in his, his little layer yeah. and ban all of it. Yeah. And Amazon statues and all this other stuff. Amazon removed Confederate flags from their website after that happened. One one deranged lunatic commits a murder. They go to his house and they're like, he had a Confederate flag on his wall. You know what that means? That's racism. And so Amazon's like, well, we, you know, out of a, you know, in out of respect and blah, 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 we're going to remove that. I want to know, did this, did this cuckoo bird have one of those pink, blue and white psycho flags hanging in her room? Like the last one did? Yeah, like the last one did. Uh, are we going to, is Amazon going to ban those? Is Amazon going to decide that they cannot allow the symbol of hatred uh, to be sold on their website? Are we also, gonna, this is two in a row. Yeah, and the two in a row. Thing, that was one kid, right? Mm-hmm. I can, was, there, was there a second or a third one that had Confederate flags? Oh, uh, no, there was just one. There was just the one. I can order a transgender pride flag on amazon right now just a thought but isn't that a symbol of hate it it was was a symbol embraced by a murderer by a lunatic murderer yeah they don't have any confederate flags no you can't have that you're not allowed they have the betsy ross flag oh yeah you got to be careful with that one uh because uh what was it colin colin kaepernick said that that's a symbol of of racism Ladies and gentlemen, the, the the double standard is staggering here. 
And the people are like, see, this is why you got to ban guns and you got to ban AR-15s and ban AR-15s. Um, hello? What did the police officer use to put this animal down? This is the part that annoys me the most out of any of these when these events happen. We have a real opportunity to address the core issue that is causing this to, to occur. And the the quote-unquote leaders are not seizing that opportunity. They blame it on the object no. instead of the 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 core of the issue, which is why are people more likely, why are there more of these things happening now than there was before? Why are there more people that think it's okay to do that? And it seems that ma- the majority of them are younger people. And so they're, and they're what has all happened, liberal what has lunatics. changed? Yeah, what has changed in the last 20, 30, 40 years? Um, the food consumption, food consumption that younger people are, are consuming is all bull crap. Most of the ingredients are inflammatory, which we know through the presentation that we played. I can't remember if we did this for the public or the grad program, but those things are causing, and they've linked seed oils directly back to an increase in violence. Absolutely. And so we have an opportunity to address that and fix it, but the, nobody is doing that. And it's, oh, it's just seed so oils. I, it's hard for me to talk about this omega publicly six because negatively affects the impulse control area of the brain. It inflames it yes. and it, an impulse control is what stops you from becoming a compulsive gambler. Impulse control is what stops you from becoming a drug addict, an alcoholic, or a violent person. Impulse control. All right, we uh, road rage. They're always talking about road rage, about pe- how people can't control themselves. There's an impulse control par- portion of your brain. When you negatively affect that, when you hamper that, when you damage that, what do you think you get from the human animal when their impulse control mechanism is out of whack? What? Well, that, that has nothing to do with anything. We, what we need to do is we need to give them drugs. Yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to put them on, on drugs. Yeah, we need to put and, them on drugs. And, and, and another much, I think, simpler and more practical thing, honestly, is the fact if you look around nowadays, the these people are becoming like celebrities. Like th- like the Columbine shooters have basically become like a cultural icon in America. Yeah. Well, you can thank the left for that. You can thank but Michael Moore for that. Regardless, if we're talking like why are young people doing this because what what's the what's the prevailing thing since the 20s that all Americans want? What, fame? To 15 be fame. minutes of fame. Yeah. Um, and so you take a mentally deranged h- hormone imbalanced for you know many reasons probably yeah you can't well, you you can yeah, you- and then they go well what can i do to get my name Im- immortalized forever yeah. and now everybody in the country knows this piece of garbage's name ah, in face i just call it it the dead it it was were that's a pronouns is was were yeah. but uh, but so y- you also got to think about that well let, let's think about this if you want to be a thinking human uh, and I, I talked about this on on mark's show and i talked about this on bill's show and i'm gonna talk about it on ours uh in 1994 clinton pushed through the gun free schools act making it a, a felony making it a crime to have a firearm not only in a school but within a certain like um, distance of a school. Because that's going to make our schools safe. That's going to protect our schools, protect our children, protect our teachers. You want to have a you want to do a fun research project? Look up the number of school attacks prior to the Gun Free Schools Act, and then look up the number of school attacks after the Gun Free Schools Act. Here's the spoiler. There's a thousand times more after than there was before. Because what we did is we advertised to every sick, twisted lunatic with a grudge that, you know what? Here's what we did. We made sure 
that those buildings are target-rich environments. We made sure that the people in those buildings are defenseless. We guarantee it for you. Those people are defenseless. The fa- Columbine, the Columbine attack happened in 99. 1999. 24 years ago. The fact that we are 24 years past Columbine and there are still schools in America that are open targets. And then they're, that they, their reliance is plastic signs and policy statements. And what the, the media, the criminal media, what they will never bring up because they are criminals is they will never raise their hand and say, I thought Bill Clinton promised us safe schools in 1994. Didn't this lunatic know that it's against the law to take a gun into a school? Didn't they know? I don't know. Didn't they know that murder is illegal? You have a, a, a monstrous human who is willing to commit murder, but somehow you're going to tell me that that person is going to be stopped by a plastic sign or by the knowledge that, that you know, Bill Clinton signed the Gun-Free Schools Act in 1994. Oh, I was going to go in that school and kill all these people, but I just found out that you're not allowed to carry a gun onto a school campus, so I guess I'm not going to do it. It's insane. It's insane that people pretend that things of that nature will help. Or um, we're, So what we're going to do now is uh, we've got all the liberal lunatics on the, you know, they're out there screaming for the disarmament of whom? Criminals? No, they're not screaming for the disarmament of criminals. They're screaming for the disarmament of you. What no one will ask when some, some lunatic Democrat or one of their screaming minions when they 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 scream for common sense gun control. Nah, nah, nah. What no one will say is, can you point to a a program that you have enacted that removed firearms from the hands of criminals, from violent criminals? Show me that program. Show me the example where you removed firearms from violent criminals, and now they no longer have them. Because they can't. They won't. Hundreds, thousands of murders occur every year in Chicago, and they're 99.9999, like the, like the bacteria thing, 99.9999982% of murders in Chicago are committed by people who should not have a gun and who, to whom it is illegal for them to possess a gun. And yet they still kill. And that they want, they want people who are innocent, who have never committed a crime, to be disarmed, but they never say exactly how they're going to go about disarming crim- violent criminals because they don't want to disarm violent criminals because they don't care about disarming violent criminals because disarming violent criminals is not their goal. Criminals and terrorists are the Democrats' best friend. I elaborated upon that in the book Examining the Armed Citizen, in case you haven't got it. Because criminals and terrorists provide the excuse for totalitarians, for tyrants, to steal the rights of the people and to enslave them. Lessons learned, Nashville. Number one, what have, Jared, how many times have I come to this microphone and said, if you find yourself in a, a shooting, an attack, you're in a mall, a church, a school, a fill in the blank, and a lunatic with a gun comes in and decides they're going to commit mass murder, who will be able to positively affect that outcome? You. Yeah, you. Only the people on the inside of the building will be able to positively affect that outcome. 
The police will show up eventually. And maybe they'll get them, like here in Nashville. They'll get them. In Texas, Jack Wilson smoked that joker in six seconds. Six seconds. He smoked that joker, right? Ladies and gentlemen, only the people who are present when the attack begins are going to have the ability to make a positive outcome. And the thing is, what the CNN, MSN, the the scumbag criminals will never tell you is they will never report on, they will never hammer on all of the times that an armed good person stopped a mass murder. Remember that the party, the street party? That's or not, that won't get eyeballs. It's, it's yeah. not fear-mongering. The guy leaves, comes back with a rifle, a woman with a concealed carry permit, draws her pistol, shoots the sucker, shoots him dead. No, or no innocent people die. Only the bad guy dies. Where's CNN on that? Where's Joy B? Where's the view on that? Uh, they, they don't care because that doesn't help them. They want, they literally, listen to me. The other side wants dead children. Oh, come on, Paul. That's not, that can't possibly be true. They dance in the blood of dead children. Before the blood is even dry on the ground, they've run to a microphone to call for you to be disarmed. I'm not a liberal lunatic. I'm not a psychotic weirdo. No, it doesn't matter. Because they can control the psych. The psychotic weirdos are not their problem. The criminals are not their problem. The terrorists are not their problem. Their problem is you. The American gun owner who thinks for yourself who makes your own decisions. The American gun owner who says, I don't need or want the government in my life. I don't want the government to even know my name. I don't need their help. I don't want their help. I want them to leave me alone. See, that's the difference between our side and their side. Our side says, just leave me alone. Let me live my life. The other side says, no, you cannot be left alone. You will be told how to live your life, and we'll tell you exactly how you're going to live it. That's the difference between us. You need to become ungovernable. You need to look in a mirror and decide, I don't care what a liberal lunatic did. I don't care how many children the left murders. I'm not going to disarm myself and my family. Because that's not how it works. That's not how you save your country. You don't save your country by surrendering to tyrants. You don't save your country by surrendering to the mentally ill. You don't save your country by catering to lunatics and criminals. You save your country by looking in the mirror and saying and deciding, no, no matter what happens, I will not be disarmed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got more, but they're gonna we're gonna have to save it. We're gonna have to save it for the bonus hours. We got a bonus hour on Thursday. We got a bonus hour on Friday. And trust me, you're gonna want to be there. You're going to want to be there. Until then, though, uh, Jared, will you tell remind people just in case they missed it how they could actually be there for the bonus hour? Oh, crap balls. Yeah, what time is get it? GetSOTG.com. All right. We're good. We're good. Get GetSOTG.com. So until we're together again, remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com.